Hello and welcome to today's Managed Services monthly education series webinar on Oracle EPM forms and dashboards presented by Carol Breyer, Lead Consultant at Alithia. Alithia has over 320 professionals who provide the full Oracle suite of services across various industries spanning EPM, ERP, SCM, and HCM for financial services, healthcare, high tech, and more. Alithia is not only an Oracle partner, but we are also an Oracle ERP, EPM, and HCM customer. Because we run our business on Oracle Cloud, our team of experts is here to provide the right solutions to meet your business needs. Our managed services team is a dedicated practice of Oracle certified consultants focused on sustainment services. We're 100% Oracle Cloud focused and everything we implement, we also support. We greatly appreciate your participation in this series of webinars delivered by our managed services team. I'll hand things over to Carol now to kick things off. Um, welcome. So today I'm going to discuss uh, the top five reasons to start using forms and dashboards 2.0. Um, my hope is to provide you some compelling reasons to switch to forms 2.0. In my opinion, this is one of the best new features that Oracle released in 2023 for EPM. And I know no one likes to be first in adopting new features and often delay in implementing it, but I'm hoping over the next 30 minutes or so to show you the benefits from using forms and dashboards 2.0. And I hope after this webinar, you'll make the switch uh, today to your test environment. Um, so I'm going to begin with an agenda here. So we're going to talk about exactly what's new, uh, where it's available, how to switch, and then the top uh, five reasons of why you should change. So you might be interested to know, this was interesting to me, I didn't know this, is that Oracle did a survey and they found that 80% uh, of the usage is in the web now, not in SmartView. And if, if you had asked me that before I knew the answer, I would have thought the reverse, that people were using more SmartView than the web. But because so many people are using um, smart, uh, the web now instead of SmartView, Oracle's devoted a lot more into improving the forms and dashboard experience for the users. Um, it's basically, you know, the market's matured, the user base is more evolved, and so many more people are in the browser now. So Oracle's putting their resources behind it to make it better. So what exactly is new? Um, in Dashboards and Forms 2.0. Um, it's basically all ease of use and usability improvements. Um, there's a new technology called uh, Oracle Jet, which is Oracle JavaScript Extension Toolkit. And this is a new technology um, that makes it much better at bringing new capabilities to build engaging and responsive, or read that as fast, user interfaces. Um, and the, the other big, big benefit of this whole thing is that it's a user interface or a runtime change. So there's no migration, there's no conversion. It is just a, a UI change. So you can turn it on or turn it off or revert back um, with no real risk um, to changing or, or migrating. Um, it's going to be the default setting for all new uh, applications. Um, new apps will automatically be using them. Uh, all future enhancements are only going to be on 2.0, but if you're an existing application, you're going to have to opt in. And I'll show you how to do that. And then where is it available? It's basically available everywhere. So every EPM module or application um, can turn it on. Uh, it's kind of nice that it's by module because if you wanted to turn it on, say in planning first or in uh, FCCS first, you could do that and then roll it out to other uh, applications later. And how do you enable it? Um, there's basically one prerequisite that's that you have to be on the Redwood experience. Um, and if you're not on Redwood, you're going to be on it soon because Oracle said in late second quarter, of this year, they're going to automatically convert non Redwood environments to Redwood. Um, this is similar to, you know, with financial reporting, that's by the mid to late uh, 2024, you're going to have to get off financial reporting. So um, there's a good chance that with uh, Forms 2.0 at some point, Oracle's going to. Uh, convert you over to using that as well. So you might as well try it out now. Um, so basically, after you make sure that you have Redwood enabled, you're going to go into settings and you can enable Forms 2.0 in there. And I'll show you that a little bit later. So reason number five of um, why you should switch over to Forms 2.0 is Calc on the Fly. 
Um, this is a cool new feature and it's basically the ability to do like an instant member formula calculation or outline math and aggregation on your grid. So before hitting save, which might run a rule, which might take a bit of time, you can actually see the changes um, as you're entering data into your forms. So there's no wait time. The grid doesn't have to reload. It is a very quick change that you see. It's emulating a saved S space without actually saving it. Um, and it's just a simple checkbox that you enable on form design in order to make this happen. So at this point, let me give you a quick little uh, demo of this. Um, so if we come in to uh, our forms here, So in here, I'm in the, the Forms 2.0. I can make a change, change my data here, and you'll see that it automatically updates my uh, subtotal here. Computer equipment is a stored member. It's not dynamic, um, but it's uh, making this change in instant time. Now, if I do decide that that's the number I want and I hit save and there's any rules or anything associated with this form, they're going to kick off and run and you know this will be committed to the database and this will get aggregated from a script. Um, but the other uh, cool thing is when I'm in here, like so I entered the 30,000 there, um, there's this new feature here undo so you can revert it back while you're in here on any form at any time. Um, and, and that's kind of one of the, the nice new features with the UI here. So um, the calc on the fly, as I said, you just enter it and it updates there. Um, in order to, I'm going to not keep my changes there, in order to make the change work on a form, it, when you edit it, you would hit the checkbox here to enable calc on the fly, and then it could be in use for any dimension, any member formula that's represented it, represented on your grid. The number four reason to switch to using Forms 2.0 is right back enabled grids. Um, you might notice from what I'm talking that I'm going to talk more about the Forms 2.0 new features because there's a lot more new features in this release for Forms 2.0, but on the roadmap, Oracle has many more new features coming for Dashboards 2.0. There's going to be themes and there's going to be a lot more um, things that you can do in Dashboards. In this release, the, the key new features are that you have right back enabled grids and kind of as an aside to that, you can also edit your grids without data, which is a nice feature. Sometimes, you know, when you're editing and there's a lot of data or a lot going on it takes a long time to refresh and it kind of slows you down so that's a nice new feature to do um, with edit without data so basically now your forms can be displayed as grids you can update cell values run rules you can save changes you can open and edit your grids in uh, dynamic tabs and you can edit the dashboards without data and i have a little example here of where you would when you go over to edit there's now also this edit without data here so let me show you a little bit of what this looks like uh, we go to dashboards and if we want to look at a right back grid you basically you know have to make sure that you're going to have an intersection that is you're able to write back to um, so we'll go to sales east and then we'll find an area where we can um, write back and you can put in different data and you can save it and you can edit. So this gives you a lot more flexibility in how you want to present your grids to your users because you can you know, include the charts in here um, and they can actually edit right in the, the form here. So then let's go back. So then we're on to now my reason number three of why you should move to Forms 2.0 uh, is the improved look and feel. So the whole JET technology gave Oracle a lot more in uh, how to make the, the, the forms look and the dashboards look. Um, so they are, they're crisper, they're cleaner, um, there's faster navigation moving cell to cell. Um, large grids are going to be four to times faster refreshing. There's less clicks, there's less pop-ups. Um, the, the refresh button is gone now. You have like auto apply, you could have it on or off um, and I'll demo that and show you what that looks like. Um, the line item detail is improved and it's actually a change if you're coming from a planning um, 
application, you're not going to have supporting detail anymore. It's going to be line item detail, which kind of keeps it in line with FCCS, and it's much more robust than it was. Um, it isn't really cell by cell. You can do ranges and across things. Um, there's also a new dialogue for uh, rules runtime prompts, and the search in the POV and the smart list is all improved. So to give you a little bit more of a feel in uh, the background here, this is a form 1.0. You'll notice that the end is uh, the net cash here, but then if you come to forms 2.0, you'll see you have much more real estate. This goes to the end of the actual form, and then you even have white space, so there's more room. Um, I don't know if these pictures really show it. You might see it when I demo a little bit more, but this is a much crisper display. It's uh, a lot easier on your eyes when you're looking at it than this one is. Um, and then we have also some new menus and things in here. So um, there's this little menu here, which has like the adjust, the grid spread, the comments. This is where line item details are, the change history, the undo button that I showed you earlier. Um, and then across up in the upper right are where your instructions would go, where you have a refresh. There's the search, the property panel. There's the actions menu with all the um, selections in here and the little uh, toolbar over here has the high dimension labels or the auto apply and I'll show you this in just a second. So if we come into a uh, grid here, you're going to notice as I change my dimension, everything's updating. So I'm not having to hit that go button over here, the, the refresh. Um, it's all automatic. Now, if you have uh, multiple dimensions like this and you want to change, you know, more than one at a time before you refresh, you can actually deselect the auto apply over here so that I could make a change, say here, and I could also make a change, say here, and then I could refresh the grid. Um, so depending on what your uh, grids are set up, what how many different changes you're making, you can uh, change that or toggle that back on and off there. Um, here you have, if you want to adjust uh, your grid spread, your comments, your line item detail, your change history, tracking everything that you did in here. And as I was shown before, here's your instructions. Here's another refresh. Your action menu is here. And in the gear box here too, you can hide those dimension layers, uh, labels there to get a little bit more space here. And you can also, you know, shrink that to get more space. So um, you'll see that it, it, you know, it looks a lot cleaner in here. Where I, I really noticed it the most is if we look in dashboards, I actually have a, a dashboard uh, 1.0 saved in here. And here's 1.0. And I don't know, I think when you, if you kind of take this one in and now I go to the 2.0, you can see that it, it's a much better display. It's the, the fonts are just crisper um, and they stand out better compared to the 1.0. It's a, I think it's easier on your eyes when you're looking at it. And so the second reason why you should switch to using Forms 2.0 is so you get the new member selector. Um, and the new member selector is, in my opinion, much better than what we've had. Um, it's it's almost like uh, what's old is new again here because uh, we're we're kind of going back to the the tree based member selection. the The current one is the one that it kind of goes out to the right as you select. Um, somebody said that's more Mac like when you do it that way. This is kind of more vertical instead of horizontal. Um, and I like it. I, I think it reminds me of uh, the member select from, I don't know, a few versions ago. Um, but we have the POV drop down, the search is improved, and it's going to bring parity more with uh, Smart View and the web, which is, is nice as well. So let me show you a couple little print screens here. So You'll see now the member selector, this is our choices list is going down. And when we jump into the member selector, that's also going down as opposed to going across and to refresh your memory. Here's the current member selector in 1.0. So when you pick total entity, then you go into total department and sales and you'll notice um, 
this is a very simple app. All the names are nice and short, but in a lot of instances, your aliases are really long. And as you scroll across, you can't really read them anymore. Um, and you can't resize in here. In the new one, you can resize it, make everything bigger, make the whole member selector bigger. So I think that's a big improvement. And then in bringing the parity of SmartView and Forms 2.0 together, this is what the SmartView uh, member selector looks like uh, the drop down here, and this is what um, the 2.0 looks like. So they're they're much more uh, close together as compared to this and this. Um, so let me just show you a little bit with member select. Um, and actually, I'll I'll show you here. We could. Um, well, we'll stay in here for now. So if we go into here, you know, I can pick another member um, by going down the tree. Um, so if I want to pick that instead, and then it will refresh for that. OK, so the top reason of why you should switch to Forms 2.0 is because it's really easy. It's a very straightforward change. There's no commitment. You could switch back if you want. Um, you just make the change, make sure you're running Redwood and you enable Forms 2.0 and there you go. That's all you have. So if you're I don't I personally don't think you're going to be unhappy with it because the member selector is better. It's faster. It's a crisper UI um, and you could make the change today. So let me show you really quick in the system where to go. Um, so in appearance is where you have to make sure that you have the Redwood experience enabled. And then in settings. In the middle column here. You make sure that you have forms 2.0 enabled here and that's all you have to do um, with the dashboards. Um, there is a conversion. So if you are in dashboards here, you'll you'll notice before I showed you I had a. a let me close those up. I have a 1.0 and a 2.0. Um, so if on the 1.0, I could come over here and I could convert it to a 2.0. Um, so if you are, if you do have dashboards, you might want to back up the 1.0s in case you do want to revert. I don't think you will. I think pretty much everything is better in the 2.0. Um, but that is the one caveat for that. But the forms there, it's a runtime change only um, and it, it provides a lot of benefits um, that I think that you'll you'll stick with it. So here again, here's all the reasons why you should do that and all the enhancements that are coming in um, the future are going to be on the 2.0. And then I provided some additional resources, so Oracle has some nice uh, short videos that you can watch on the 2.0 features and there I also provided some links here for the documentation. So I am hoping that today um, I'm showing you some features that um, are intriguing and get you to maybe as soon as the webinar is over, you can log on to your test environment, make sure you have Redwood enabled, enable the Forms 2.0 and test it out over there and see what your forms and everything look like. And I hope that you will be happy with making the switch and um, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Yeah. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in to today's webinar. Please check out our website and follow us on LinkedIn at Alithia Digital Cafe for updates about the rest of the monthly education series, other webinars and events, and more.